to me there's nothing special about Land Rover suspension. In fact, it's really only one step removed from horse and cart suspension. I knew that Brutus's suspension would be in quite a state after living a life on the Northland beaches, so I gave the springs a preliminary sandblast, and then I did this. I've never pulled apart leaf springs before, but I figured, hey, it can't be too hard. Pull them apart, clean them, do any repairs that need doing, put them back together again. So I nipped up to Auckland and I spent just half an hour with two really interesting guys from Archer's Auto Springs. They gave me all the tips and tricks that I needed to know to refurbish my own springs. I think the first thing I noticed after I pulled the pack apart was where the springs wear, where the springs rust, and where there's apparently no wear at all. You can see the sand that's crept in from where I've been sandblasting the outside of the pack. And you can see the packed rust that's been forming in between the leaves. First job is to create four new wraps, the, the bars, the straps that go around the pack and hold it all together. So I've measured the length of the old rusty nasty ones and I'm making some new ones out of 5mm by 25mm flat bar. I'll drill a hole through the centre of each one after cleaning the edges up and making it so that they can't dig into anything while I'm working on them. This hole has to be as close as possible to the diameter of the rivets that are going to hold them on. Problem with the rivets, Archer's Auto Springs couldn't furnish me with the taper seat rivets that I needed. They only had the rounded head rivets that can't be used on this particular type of spring pack because the next leaf goes over the head of this rivet so therefore the rivet has to be countersunk. So not being able to buy these rivets I found myself going from hardware store to hardware store to find bolts with a tapered head, taper set, that could do the job. The next thing to do is to mark out where the bends are going to be so that I can pre-make the first two bends before riveting the straps on. It's imperative that you set them up in the vise the right way. You need it so that the bent part of the bend is going to be on the outside of the jaw so that you don't end up making something that's tighter than the width of the spring so that it won't fit over the spring again. The measurement of uh, 63 millimeters must be retained for the spring to fit into.
that should be four all the same I'm pretty happy with that decent fit now on to making rivets out of bolts I've got a selection of bolts from various hardware stores I know that those Allen headed cap screws were going to be quite hard but I needed something with a tapered seat I settled on these ones and made myself a little kiln out of uh, refractory bricks. I've set the screws up inside the little kiln because I only have this thing here which is designed for chefs for flambéing or whatever the term is, the top of um, pies and things to give them a, a crust. So it doesn't have much power but by holding the heat in I was able to get the four rivets as hot as they needed to be. Quickly whipped them out. This one's the practice one, I'm not particularly sorted yet, but get it through the hole, turn it over, put the strap over it and give it a knock just to get it down. And then the first thing you do is upset the rivet. Not by talking to it in a mean way or anything like that, by giving it some really good hefty wax straight down on the top. And that makes it fat and makes it fit the hole. Then you turn the hammer over and use the ball peen end, and the ball peen will put that nice mushroom rounded finish on the rivet. Okay, that's the first one. We'll call that the warm up. Let's see if I can get a little bit quicker and sharper with the second one. All going well so far. No burnt fingers. No dropped rivets on the floor. Two upset rivets. Then you whip the hammer over and peen the rivet into shape. Back in the old days when they were using these rivets regularly, they would have a rivet set, which the last few hits, just before it cools down, they would use this domed former and give that a good hard whack down over the top and that would give the rivet a very finished look. They're hard to find nowadays so we'll just have to manage without that last phase of the job. Because I've already painted each individual leaf after cleaning it with the Gilsonite chassis paint we're going to end up with a leaf pack that uh, shouldn't rust like the last one did. But I've only painted the, where the leaves are touching on the inside. Once I've assembled the leaves into a pack and then fitted that pack back underneath the Land Rover, then I'll look at repainting the total outside of it. I don't really want to paint it while I'm handling it because it takes several days for the stuff to dry. And there's no point in getting it all over me and all over my clothes unless I have to. Once all your cleaning and repair work and remedial work and painting has been done and it's ready to assemble, the important thing to do is to 
keep everything in a nice parallel pack. With Land Rover front springs it's fairly easy because they're symmetrical, but the rear springs have the pinch bolt in the center slightly towards the front of the pack. So you'll find that you might be starting to assemble leaves the wrong way around. It's important to keep an eye on what you're doing. Here I am just checking that they are in fact symmetrical and they are. But as I say, on rear leaf packs, to stop axle tramp, they don't put the axle in the center of the leaf pack. They bias it slightly to the front by an inch or so. Somehow that helps with axle tramp. So if you're doing rear packs, be aware of that. Also be aware that on a Land Rover, the driver's side spring pack has slightly more set in it than the passenger's side. That's so that the vehicle will sit better with a full tank of gas and a porky driver which the Land Rover guys in their wisdom decided that that was the oh, the optimum weight or the, the, the standard or most likely use of a reasonably full tank of gas and one decent sized driver and no passenger. Not the end of the world if you do get it round the wrong way, it's just that when the vehicle's empty it will develop a horrendous lean to one side. So it's all pinched up and tight. Now I'm going to put it back in the vise and squeeze up these pack straps that hold it all together. I'll just nip those up and that will give me the opportunity to get the big smacking hammer and fold over the tops. Normally this would be done hot but hey, I haven't got access to the heat. Do the middle two first. And then I can move on to the outer two. They don't need to be absolutely tight, it's best that they are left just a little loose so that the spring can move. If you tighten them up too much it will only increase wear. Where's the wear? Right there. Oh, there we go. That's one finished spring pack. My first ever spring refurb. And I'm very happy with it. They're a little bit pitted, but there's a few years left in them before I have to replace them. The pitting does cause them to lose their um, spring rate, so they will be a little softer as they get older, as they rust. But they'll get through a safety check and one other thing I'd like to sh tell you about is this random loop over the main eye. That's called a military eye, or a military hanger. And the reason for that is, should you break a main leaf, it will be encapsulated within this loop, and you will get home.
Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources isn't just a landy channel. Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources is everything that's living off-grid, refurbing, recycling and rebuilding.